you know, the, the anime influence has always been there uh, in Ballmasters. So how did the collaboration with Studio 4C come together? I, I go to a lot of animation festivals and um, a, a friend of mine, this guy, Silas uh, Hickey, who, who has a company called Custom Nuts, he, he used to work for Cartoon Network Asia and he works in Japan and he has these connections to these Japanese studios. And we were talking and I was just like, man, you know, I, it would, it'd be awesome if it could, I wish we could do it at a real anime studio. And he was like, well, I know these people. So he kind of set this up. And then we talked to adults. I mean, I love Titmouse. I didn't want to not do it at Titmouse, but I was like, oh, I kind of would love to do it at a real anime studio. So um, since it was a special, we figured, you know, why not? So he, we kind of made it happen and uh, yeah, it worked out really great. For sure. And And what stood out the most about seeing a Japanese studio's take on the show? I'll tell you something very strange about working with Japanese studios. Like I, how do I say this? So when I met them, first of all, it was COVID. So it's all on Zoom. But I was thinking, you know, yeah, we're, we're going to see their take. And we had the talk. And like, we really, I mean, the first talk, like, we really want to be collaborative, you know, this, this, and this. And then when we started, they were very much like, how do you want this to look? How do you want this to look? So like, it was a lot of, I was, I mean, they, they definitely, they put so much of their influence in it and it was always awesome. But it was also um, like, a, I guess it's a culture thing or a language thing. Like it was, it, um, it was very, how do I say this? they'd always ask like a million questions and it would be like, like, yeah, just make whatever you want. Like make it, just make it look awesome, you know, but, but they yeah. did. Um, I mean, look, Studio 4 C is amazing. Um, I've been a fan of them since I was in my twenties. Like mine, I mean, mind game is one of my favorite films and they do a lot. They, and, and they also do tons of things that just look totally different. So, and then um, uh, uh, Nakamura Sam, he was the animation director of Akira. He's worked on so many things, but um, so I would do rough, sketches and drawings and send to them and then they'd redo it in their style and send it back and they completely redesigned everything but but yeah it was very um what i was trying to say before was like in the beginning they sounded in my head i thought oh man they're going to totally change everything and then and then when we started working together it, it was just they were just so respectful that i was yeah. like no it's okay like totally i mean you saw it like a lot of the stuff changed a lot like i mean lulu doesn't even look like the same i mean sort of looks the same but just just a different interpretation of the characters yeah, yeah, for sure. And and what anime specifically have served really as the biggest inspirations for Ballmasters as a series? I don't think there was one because what happened, you know, when I was coming up with this show, it's funny. Um, I've always loved anime since I was in like junior high and like, but I never thought like I couldn't draw good enough or I was like, I can't make an anime. It'll, it'll suck or it won't be good enough or it'll just be kind of crappy. And mm -hmm. um, I remember when I was coming up with it, how do I say this? When, when you're working on a show for Adult Swim, you, you know, there's no deadline when you're developing the show. But I I remember like Ollie, the producer called me. And she's like, are you are you serious about the show or not? And I was like, Ollie, I'm just, I'm, I can't figure this show out. And I watched, uh, I'm a David Lynch fan. And I, I can't remember if I read some interview with him or I watched Mahal and Drive and there was some commentary or something about, and they were, he was talking about like, don't try to make what other people make. Like, like it was something about like how his films are like, you're getting in his head and it's his dream and make what you can make kind of talk. And I mm -hmm. thought, this just needs to be like me making my version of anime. And I, and when I stopped worrying about trying to make it all perfect, it kind of just came out, but, but there were tons of influences. I mean, I love a lot of different anime. So, uh, you know, just, it was anime, but it was also things like wrestling. It was things like um, B movies, you know, ob obviously rollerball, you know, mm -hmm. dystopian things. Um, it's funny, the, the ball, baby ball, the character, do you remember the movie major league? No, I don't. Major League is sports comedy. And yeah. uh, the poster was like this this baseball with like a mohawk and sunglasses and all this. And when I was a oh, kid, okay, yeah. I remember I was like, oh my God. Yeah, it's got like Charlie Sheen in it and stuff. I was like, oh my God, I want to see this movie so bad. And when I went and saw the movie, that thing is never in the movie. Like I thought it was a <laughs> character. And so that was one of the things I was like, well, what what if the ball's alive? And yeah. so the baby ball is based on that poster. And also I, I forgot to rewind. Um, at the time, all these really amazing animes were coming out, like Kill a Kill, mm -hmm. um, Yuasa's Ping Pong, things like that. And also in anime, you know, there's so many sports animes of, of every kind of sport. I mean, it could be ice skating or swimming, running, basketball, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, well, there's not really like a sports cartoon in Adult Swim. So, you know, that, that was kind of the other reason. I, I'd, again, I'd love wrestling. I'd love stuff like like rollerball or, or, or you know, B-movie fake sport stuff. So I was like, maybe it's like an anime fake sport thing. So it was kind of like all these things combined. So Awesome. 
Yeah. yeah and and also um natasha leone's career has continued to grow like even to higher heights so what stands out most about working with her and that she like enjoys doing this crazy show i mean she's amazing and i'm shocked she even still uh works with us because she's so amazing <laughs> but i don't know she's just very nice and i think she just likes i mean look she's in she's amazing like she'll come in and you know how some people like i don't know if you've ever been to a, a voice record but usually you know the actors will go through the script they'll do like a, a bunch of takes of each line all this and she came in the first day and she was like do you care if i just do you care if i just read through this script and i go yeah sure i was like i, I didn't want to like say anything and she read yeah. through the thing and i was like oh my god this is the character like i'm not <laughs> even glad it was perfect and i mean she's a she's amazing and uh she's amazing like i rarely have her redo any lines she comes in and, and bangs it out she she'd come in before and do like three scripts at once and we'd have scheduled something like some three-hour record and she'd be done in like 20 minutes wow. like it's, it's nuts yeah and she's always like i'm always like thank you for doing this or she's like oh it's fun you know like i th i think she's very talented i mean i really do that's so cool yeah. and um you know the special is also particularly interesting because you get to see Krazar's family and explore that dynamic with his brother what did you like most about fleshing out that element one thing with the first two seasons is we we always i say we me and the other writers like we'd get worried like it was always about ballmaster and gaz and ball and you know ballmaster and gaz and ace and all that and we worried it was starting to get kind of old like this team stuff and all that and Krazar was kind of a you know, people just think he's so funny. And we're like, maybe we focus more on Krazar and, and what this whole big world, you know, this, this real problem is going to be. And uh, I don't know, it just, uh, it was fun to think of like, who is he? Where is he from? And we're like, they're, they're these like weird omnipotent beings. And what's, this is spoiler stuff, but you know, his race, they're not necessarily bad guys. Cause he's kind of a, a mess up that isn't doing what he's supposed to do. And he's mm. kind of hiding out from them. So they kind of came to, and his brother is clearly sadistic. There's a whole, there's a whole backstory between him and his brother. That's not in the special that I hope we get to do more because there is a backstory. Krazar is from a really ancient, powerful race, but they're, they're, they're being threatened by this new thing in the universe. And, and this will all come out later if we get to do more. So it's, it's a, it's a big setup for like a big kind of epic story that, but Krazar and, um, you know, team earth are going to kind of, help you know help so yeah for sure and you mentioned wrestling earlier um Krazar looks a lot like 90s gold dust from wwf was that an inspiration or coincidence and looks just like him yeah totally. <laughs> i feel bad because like i love wrestling i lo well, look at super jail it's the warden i mean i can't believe they let me make that guy look just like willy wonka but uh yeah gold dust was a huge influence and i was like because I, I remember i was designing all these versions of him you know, the same thing happened with the warden. I, I do all these versions. And I kept going back. I was like, he's kind of just Willy Wonka though. And, and with Krazar, I kept drawing him and drawing him. And with animation, you, know, you want something to be simple. And I was like, he's just in this bodysuit. He kind of like, he's kind of heavy metal, but he's kind of, he's kind of heavy metal, but he's kind of, um, what's the word? Kind of glam rock. And, uh, but yeah, it, Goldust was a huge influence. I love Goldust. <laughs> That's sick. And speaking of Super Jail, you know, Adult Swim's been doing uh, Aqua Teen and Venture Bros uh, specials and movies. Any interest in a potential Super Jail special down the line? I would love to, but it's up to them. <laughs> you guys hear that? I would love to. <laughs> I have ideas. I really do. Awesome. And how do you view that show's, you know, legacy? It, it seems to have gotten more appreciation, especially for its, you know, incredible animation as time's gone on. This is a reason I'd love to do it because how do I say this? I think when Super Jail came out, it was a little too abrasive. So people that people either loved it or hated it. And and I think now the bar has been raised of like we, you know, th things like Tim and Eric and you know, Rick and Morty, things have gotten weirder in general and crazier. So I, I feel like now Super Jail doesn't seem that abrasive or crazy as a show. So I feel mm -hmm. like it would almost do better now because I, I won't lie, I meet people when I I'll meet someone and talk about Super Jail and they'll they'll be like, oh my God, like they like it. And I'm like, it's weird when it was out it wasn't really that big i mean we we didn't get you know we had four seasons but i don't think we had crazy ratings but people it seems to be like kind of a cult thing you know yeah absolutely people uh, that's all the, like it. yeah i'm a big I'd fan love, so i would I hope love so. to do more I, mean, I hope adult swim watches all these interviews i would love to do more i love working with adult swim i love ball masters i love super jail i hope you get to do it all frankly yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome well that's all the time i have thank you so much for taking the time to do this